This is a Super Nintendo, and I want to make games for it. But to do that, you need to program it in 6518 assembly language, which is cringe and not very big shot of you. That is where we would use programming languages, which can then be translated directly into the assembly language used on the machine. Programmers all like different languages and like to argue a lot about which one's the best. Uh, my dissertation supervisor likes Scala, which is a provably wrong choice. Now, from what I can tell online, there is not a 100% stable way of using a programming language for the Super Nintendo. So why don't we change that? Okay, I have no idea how long that opening is going to take to edit, so uh, you better have appreciated it. <laughs> this is the start of a, hopefully, series of videos on my final year project at university, making a programming language for this little beauty right here. I'm only one week in, so I'll just start with the basics in this video. I have two parts to my task, um, designing a programming language and then making a compiler for it. Now, the language is what the human's going to write, so I need it to be able to do everything that I'll want the Super Nintendo to do. Do updating enemies, do read player input, do drawing to the screen, do... <laughs> your mom. It also needs to get around the SNES's architecture, because this was made in the days before good computer architecture was, like, studied, and there are some straight up whack design choices that were made. Multiplication and division require writing to arbitrary memory addresses, and then they execute really slowly. <laughs> Sprites, called objects, have a 34-bit data entry. Now you might ask yourself, hey, I thought computers could only do things in multiples of 8 bits, and you'd be right. So how does the SNES get around it nicely? It doesn't! <laughs> you have a table of 32-bit entries, and then a table of 2-bit entries, where multiple entries are sort of smushed into one byte. I'm sure it doesn't have anything important in it, just the upper bit of the exposition. What? Why? You you have you have a page number, you have information about the priority of the drawing of the sprite, all this other stuff that probably won't have to be changed during regular gameplay, like every frame. What? Why is this? Why? Why is this the one you put there? Oh, you want to access the exposition? Yeah, sure, just you know, get the get the pointer to the object, you know, wherever that is on the sprite, read the first field, hey, that's four cycles, you have your exposition. Oh, you want the upper bit? This will take six, eight, ten cycles at least. And voila, you now have the upper X bit in one of the last two bits. Thirty-four... Eight cycles, maybe? <laughs> there are some clever workarounds, but they'll take advantage of some other jank shit, and I don't fully understand it yet, so I'm not gonna try and explain it. Ugh, I need to watch more Retro Mechanics Explained videos. Anyway, once I have the hardware down, I'll need to make a language, and the language will need to have a solid philosophy. Now, this sounds kind of weird when we're talking about a programming language. Why would a language need a philosophy? But if you don't have one, you end up with a travesty like JavaScript. Nan equals Nan is false. Not not an array is true, but just an array is false. Nan literally stands for not a number, and the type of Nan is number. Oh, JavaScript. Thank goodness you're not used for anything important. Oh, computer science. We love it. So I'll need to make the language consistent, flexible enough to handle a hardware jank, but also not use the highest levels of programming language theory because it just won't have enough RAM. And once I have that, I need to make the compiler. For the compiler, I'll need to scan the code into labeled tokens, put those tokens into an abstract syntax tree, and then walk that tree to generate the final code. Now, I've got to this second stage uh, thrice before when working on interpreted languages of varying quality. But this third stage is all new to me, so my supervisor sent me a book to help, and my god, is this a lot to read. It does throw some good shade, though. Such a fragment as x equals x plus 1 would usually be accepted as important, whereas that nonsense might not. 
I'd say that if you ride to the second, you deserve the code you get. I also want to add some nice features like shuffling the tree to make it run faster. Remember, multiplication is the enemy. You'll also want to make sure it gets rid of redundant code, known edge cases. This is months down the line if I get there. I have a small sample of the code here, but I'm not going to go in depth explaining it. Between you and me, it's taken me like two weeks to get around to recording this video and I've already had a philosophical crisis and so this has all been reworked but I made the asset so I'm showing you the asset. But that is all a story for next time so uh, if I haven't scared you off hey subscribe stick around. Next time we'll be talking about the joys of learning how to program for the Super Nintendo off 2004 era websites, shitty videos and sources that just lie to you. Anyway <laughs> goodbye for now. I don't... I don't like this at all. <laughs> oh fuck, get me out of this clown shit. <laughs>